Good morning. So it finally rained last night. It had been super hot. Apparently the birds are real excited about it. <laughs> but uh, it's a little cooler this morning, which is nice. I started my uh, marathon training plan this week uh, for the Chicago Marathon. And I uh, just had an easy run so far. Today is my first progression run. So I'm going uh, easy for 40 minutes and then a faster finish uh, for 10 minutes at the end. I'm trying out a new shoe today that I just got. Uh, I've been seeing lots of reviews of this shoe, people absolutely loving it, so I wanted to give it a shot. These are the Adidas SL2. So with the Adidas SL, they had the SL20. Uh, they made a couple updates to that. I had the SL20.3. Uh, then they came out with the Adidas SL, which wasn't quite as well received. Uh, that shoe had Light Strike Pro, a puck of it just in the front of the shoe, and then all Light Strike the rest of the shoe. Adidas's Light Strike foam is really a firm, blocky kind of foam that doesn't have a lot of energy return. Uh, so this shoe, they gave it Light Strike 2.0, which is a lot softer, kind of bouncier formulation of that Light Strike foam. And the major important difference is now it has a full length layer of Light Strike Pro, which is Adidas's racing foam that they put in all their more expensive shoes. So this shoe's starting out at $130, so it's the least expensive shoe in Adidas's Adi Zero line. Uh, but right when the shoe came out, they had a deal. It was $30 off of $100. So I was able to pick these up probably a couple days after they released for $100. So to get a super light shoe with premium race foam for $100 is an absolute great bargain. So now I'm hoping to uh, get the performance from these uh, of a more expensive shoe uh, at a great deal. So we'll see how this run goes in these today. Well, the hype is real with these. Uh, just about two miles in to my run, averaging about 8.17 pace right now. Uh, my usual easy pace is more like 8.30, uh, so these have me picking it up a little bit. Uh, I first started out, I was running 7.45 pace, where I was trying just to relax and kind of ease into the pace. These have a really awesome ride, uh, really delightful, I would say. Uh, it's just got a nice bounce to it that you really don't find with the shoe in this price point. Uh, this is reminding me more of a shoe that has super foam, which it does. It has that Light Strike Pro in there. But Light Strike Pro is kind of more on the firmer side as far as super foams go. It has kind of like what I've described in the past as a shallow bounce where it has a little bit of sink in, kind of immediate energy return. But it's not as bouncy as foams like Zoom X or... Um, some of the other super foams that are out there. This though, the Light Strike 2.0 is really much softer than the previous Light Strike. So it's giving you kind of more travel in the midsole and more of a responsive bounce back. So I'm getting kind of a deeper sink into this shoe and uh, a bigger bounce than you get with the shoe that just has regular Light Strike Pro. Uh, so the energy return from these feels really great and it really encourages you to kind of pick up the pace a little bit but since it isn't as firm i feel like i would have trouble running as fast in these for like a 5k but for training they just feel fantastic really comfortable compliant uh nice bounce and uh the upper is very tight fitting as adidas tends to do but it's not uncomfortable for me i don't have a, a wide foot i wouldn't say i have a narrow foot either i just kind of have a normal volume foot and adidas shoes tend to fit me true to size but snug in the upper however this one also has some really nice padding in the tongue this is a very padded tongue 
for an Adi Zero shoe. Uh, so there's no lace pressure on the top of my foot where a lot of times like in the Takumi Sen, if I tie that one down nice and tight at the end of my run, I'll actually have marks from the laces on the top of my foot because the tongue is so thin, it really doesn't do anything to absorb the lace pressure. And this also has padding around the entire inside of the heel. Uh, so there's no heel slippage there either, which some people experience with Adi Zero shoes. So this is really feeling to me like a much more premium shoe that should be at a higher price point than, than it actually is. Uh, so let's continue this run now and see how uh, this performs for me when I try and pick up the pace later in the run. All right, about a half hour into the run now. I may have a new uh, favorite daily shoe. I think I'm gonna be putting a lot of miles in these in the next couple of months uh, leading up to the marathon. I think these actually have the best upper of any of the shoes in the Adi Zero line. Uh, I'll do a kind of a comparison of that when I get home later, like looking at the different uppers. But people have had issues with the lacing in the Adios Pro 3. Um, the tongue in the Takumi Sen is very thin and not padded at all. This has a nice kind of padding around the heel counter. There's no slippage. It's still a thin, lightweight upper, uh, tight fitting shoe. Uh, some people have complained about the laces being cheap, but I really don't care about that. They're laces. Uh, they're not stretchy laces. I hate stretchy laces. I'm looking at you, Saucony. And I know that technically Saucony is pronounced Saucony, uh, but I'm from New York. So we say water and coffee and Saucony, all right? <laughs> oh, we also have uh, very good bacon, egg and cheese sandwiches, delicious bagels and Italian food. Some really good craft beer as well. It's a nice place. I recommend you come give it a shot. I love this colorway too, this black with the kind of fading white Adidas logo and the little kind of pop of color there. I think this is a really uh, good looking running shoe as well. So in addition to being uh, propulsive and comfortable, it also looks good, which is a plus to me. I don't really care that much about colorways, but you know, if a shoe looks good, it's just an added bonus. So the Adidas SL2. This shoe really came out of nowhere to me. I was not uh, looking for the release of this. I wasn't really thinking about it at all and then just saw it starting to come across uh, that people wearing this shoe and loving this shoe and saying it was one of the best values out there and I 100% have to agree. I think this is probably the best shoe for the money that you can buy. Uh, the fact that it starts at 130 and then basically at release you can get it for $30 off for $100 I challenge you to find a better shoe for $100. I don't think you're able to. My prior experience with the Adidas SL line was with the SL 20.3 that I got a couple years ago just as a daily trainer. SL stands for super light and uh, it's, you know, it's light. It's not super light, but uh, this one, the SL 20.3, it uh, my size of US men's 12 is 9.54 ounces. This one has uh, 27 millimeters of stack in the heel and 19 in the forefoot. This has just a full midsole of regular light strike foam, which is a very firm foam. It's uh, just a standard EVA. This has continental rubber, so it's very grippy, durable outsole. Um, just, you know, a basic daily trainer. Nothing really special about this one, but has a little bit of padding in the heel. Uh, they put a little bit of padding in the tongue to relieve some of the lace pressure there. It's just a good fitting, kind of light shoe, but very just basic. Like, there's nothing that stands out about this shoe. It's just a kind of light trainer. Doesn't really give you a lot of energy return. Nothing fantastic about the ride. Just kind of gets the job done. You want to put in some mundane... Uh, boring miles and just be comfortable in a kind of light shoe. Uh, this fits the bill for that, but really nothing to write home about as a shoe that's fantastic, that makes you motivated, that you want to reach for it and get out there and put some miles on it. I didn't pick up the Adidas SL when that came out. I think it was last year. Uh, that had the Light Strike Pro just in the front of the shoe here, and reviews of it were that it was kind of uninspiring. That still had that regular Light Strike in it, which is just not a really great foam. Uh, but the first thing that's super impressive with this shoe is uh, it's still a US 12. This one is 9.74 ounces, so it's about 0.2 ounces heavier than the SL uh, 20.3 over there, but this one actually has 36 millimeters of stack in the heel and 27 in the forefoot. So it has nine millimeters more of stack and actually weighs almost exactly the same. But the biggest difference there is this has right there, you see the little window says Light Strike Pro. This actually has an entire level, layer of Light Strike Pro going from the back all the way to the front of the shoe, which really makes a big difference in the ride and energy return. The other really big difference is this Light Strike foam is so different. It's so squishy, like I can really push in on this a lot. If I look at the back of the shoe here, I can just smush it completely, uh, as opposed to the traditional light strike, this is like a block of wood. <laughs> it's not going anywhere, very hard to flex. 
The outsole of this shoe does not have continental rubber. It just has Adidas's regular rubber, but there's a lot of ridges to this. It's actually very grippy, and uh, I haven't, I've only run it at one time so far, so there's no wear on it, nor would I expect there to be after one run, but I think this is going to hold up really well. It has a good outsole, a lot of rubber coverage. Um, you can see the, uh, the Light Strike Pro uh, peeking through there in those couple spaces as well. Two things that I really like with the upper of this shoe, it has a very padded tongue. You can actually see that there, the, the thickness of the padding here in this tongue. So it's a really comfortable tongue, zero lace pressure on the top of your shoe, which is nice if you're using this for a longer kind of effort. And you can see how much padding there is in the top here all the way around your foot which you're more likely to see in kind of like a plush daily trainer or a max cushion shoe is gonna have that extra padding inside, but it just makes this a very comfortable shoe to step into. And the fact that that Light Strike 2.0 is so soft, it actually is a very soft compliant shoe. It's very flexible as well. Comparing that to some other Adidas shoes, this is the Takumi Sen 8. Uh, we can see here there's zero padding in the heel at all. It's just a very thin heel that flops over completely. Uh, this one, the tongue too, is just a very thin perforated tongue. There's zero padding there at all. So as I mentioned before, I'd often have a nice X on the top of my foot right here uh, from where I tighten this down when I take this shoe off. This has that really, really light breathable upper. You can see right through it there. So the upper on this one is a little bit more built up, but that also makes sense for a training shoe. The Takumi Sen has a full midsole of Light Strike Pro, which is their super foam, but it's on a lot lower uh, platform. This is the lightest of the Adidas shoes I have. This one is 8.22 ounces, uh, 33 of stack in the heel and 27 in the forefoot. Uh, but this is all Light Strike Pro and it does have rods in it. Uh, whereas this is not a plated shoe, there's no rods, it's just midsole. I think the main property of Light Strike Pro though is it gives you kind of a shallow bounce and energy return where pretty much the minute it hits the ground, it depresses a little bit and wants to spring right back. So you don't get a lot of travel in the midsole. It doesn't sink in that much. So it's more of a responsive bounce than some of the other super foams. So when you're trying to run fast and with a high cadence, this is perfect for that because it's not drag dragging you down. You're not feeling bogged down in the shoe. It's just landing and popping right back. Um, so that's something where it works great for fast runs and shorter runs, but sometimes you like a little bit more padding, a little bit more cushion on a longer effort, and that's where this is going to step in and do that better than the Takumi Scent. However, the opposite is true as well. Since this does have uh, more squish, uh, more kind of movement in the midsole there, when I was running faster towards the end of my run, I felt like I was getting bogged down a little bit in this shoe uh, because of all that extra squish and comfort that this one has. Another Adidas shoe I want to compare this to is the uh, Audio 7. This is one that a lot of people really like. It has a similar upper to the Takumi Sen. This one has a little bit of padding in the back there. Uh, still a very thin tongue. This one has Light Strike Pro just in the front here, but then traditional Light Strike the whole rest of the way, which is that really firm uh, midsole that really doesn't have a lot of bounce to it. So I actually find this shoe to be a lot better to run in than this one. Uh, this one does have uh, continental rubber. It has their torsion system in there to make it a little stiffer. So again, this shoe kind of likes faster paces more, but it's a little bit unforgiving. Doesn't have a lot of bounce and cushioning if you're trying to run long in it. So I would say this kind of does the same thing that the Takumi Sen does, but not as well. Since this only has half light strike and then that firmer foam in the heel, I'd rather just have the full light strike of this one. And then if I'm looking for a longer run or something that's gonna be more compliant, this is gonna do a lot better job than this one does. The Adios Pro 3 also has that super thin upper. Some people did have issues with this lacing system, trying to get a good lockdown. That really wasn't too much of a problem for me. This one also though has that Adi Zero really thin tongue where you're not getting any protection from the laces there. This one has a higher stack of pure Light Strike Pro and then this has the carbon uh, energy rods in there. So I've used this for a marathon. I think this is a great shoe. Uh, this one is very different. It's a, a kind of the comfort version of this one, a lot less stiff a lot less propulsion than this shoe has, but this one has a lot more of that soft kind of uh, bouncy feeling where this one's more uh, more responsive, more aggressive in the way that it toes I'll off. put up on the screen now uh, the weights and kind of the sizes of a lot of the Adidas shoes that I have. Uh, they're all the ones that are highlighted in yellow there. Uh, so we can see obviously the Primex Strung is the heaviest of the shoes, but it's by far the biggest, 49.5 uh, of stack in the heel. That one's Pure Light Strike Pro. Then we have the SL2 and the SL20.3 weighing about the same but as I mentioned before this one has a lot more stack and maintains around the same weight and it is actually a little bit lighter 
uh, than the socket and endorphin speed four. So that's actually a comparison that I might do soon because um, I think these shoes are kind of in the same category. That one has a plate though, this one doesn't. I think this is a little bit more cushioned, a little bit more comfortable uh, for those longer runs where the uh, the speed four might do a little bit better job of picking up the pace since it's a little bit firmer than having that plate in there. Uh, then obviously the Adios Pro 3 and Adios 7 and Takumi Sen are the lightest of these shoes. Two things I should mention, potentially the only negatives with this shoe. If you have a wider foot, this does have that standard kind of Adidas narrow toe box. So uh, this they may come out with a wide version of the shoe at some point, but if you have a wider foot, you may want to step up a half a size to get a little bit more room in the toe box. And this is not an unstable shoe but it is pretty narrow in the midfoot and the heel there. Not as narrow as some other shoes that I have, but this is another one where if you do tend to overpronate, especially because it has such soft foam, you are gonna experience some overpronation in this shoe. So it's not a unstable shoe, but it's definitely not a stability shoe. Uh, for myself personally, I overpronate with my right foot a little bit. I could feel it on the run, you know, turning in a little bit, but it wasn't to a dangerous degree. It wasn't like a super unstable shoe where I have like with the Vaporfly where I just can't keep my ankle from uh, turning over like a baby deer uh, but basically with this shoe a little bit of instability in the heel there but not a deal breaker for me at all and the uh, the softness and the ride that I get from this more than makes up for that buy it weight or second rate, I do not think you will have any uh, issues with buying this shoe, even at full price at $130 I think this has a feel energy return and comfort that you're going to look for in a shoe that's 160 170 dollars so i think this is really punching above its weight price wise and if you're able to get it for a hundred dollars or less like i did for a brand new shoe with the premium super foam in there and all the comfort that this shoe has i think this is probably the best value of any shoe on the market right now so I'd recommend you grab a pair before Adidas sells out of them and then realizes that the shoe is better than what they priced it at and uh, raises the price for the SL3. Uh, so that's all I have for today. Uh, oh, and another important thing, uh, the Super Blast 2. I've seen some reviews of that shoe coming out now, the people that get it before it's released to the public, but that shoe is available for pre-order now. It's shipping on July 5th. I ordered my pair. So I'm just a mere mortal. I don't get sent to shoes. I ordered my pair. It's uh, gonna ship on July 5th. Uh, so look for a review of the Super Blast 2 uh, coming soon once I'm able to get that like the rest of you as opposed to the people that get it before the shoes release.